Welcome to PBIS Classroom Practices Management Practice 5, a continuum of responses to inappropriate behavior. According to Merriam-Webster, a continuum is a coherent whole characterized as a collection, sequence, or progression of values or elements varying by minute degrees. Why do you need a continuum of strategies? Well, it'll allow you to build a toolkit of respectful strategies that'll help you diminish inappropriate behaviors in your classroom. And no single strategy is going to be effective for every student or every time. A continuum of strategies will also allow you to recognize the function of the behavior and apply a growth mindset to help your students learn. The continuum of strategies are planned ignoring, physical proximity, signal nonverbal cue, direct eye contact, praise appropriate behaviors in others, redirect, reteach, praise approximation, specific error correction, regulate, relate, reason, provide choice, conference with student, and restorative circle. We know you've used all of these strategies, but we want to help you use them with purpose, confidence, and intention. We want to help you unleash your inner teaching ninja. Planned ignoring is when you ignore student behaviors when the motivation is attention and just continue instruction without stopping. Physical proximity is when you use teacher proximity to communicate that you are aware, caring, and concerned. A signal or a nonverbal cue is usually prearranged and it prompts a desired behavior, response, or adherence to a classroom procedure or routine. Use your teacher look to use direct eye contact to get the attention and nonverbally prompt a student to get back on track. When you praise appropriate behaviors in others, you help kids get back on track by looking for those who are doing the right thing and praising them publicly. When you redirect, you restate the desired behavior as described on your teaching matrix or your school-wide matrix. When you reteach, you state and demonstrate the matrix behavior, you have the student demonstrate the behavior, and you provide immediate feedback on their performance. When you praise approximations, you reinforce one behavior and not another. For example, you would praise the positive behavior while ignoring inappropriate behavior. In this situation, you might say, Johnny, I love that you raised your hand. Using specific error correction means giving specific feedback on undesired behavior how to engage in desired behavior, and connecting that to school-wide expectations. We'll talk about it more in a moment. Regulate, relate, reason means that until a child is regulated, they're unlikely to be able to relate to you, and until a child is related, they're unlikely to have the mental capacity to engage with you and high-level cognitive processes needed for problem solving. When you provide choice, you give appropriate alternative choices to lead to the same target. You might move a student or give them alternate supplies to complete the task. When you conference with a student, you would ask the five restorative questions. You would seek to understand the problem and the alternate behavior together. You would explain, you would provide a rationale, and you would practice and give feedback you might develop a plan for the future. In a restorative circle, you would bring together an inclusive circle of participants to process and address the specific incidents that have occurred, connect them to school-wide learning and expectations. Let's key in on specific error correction. Remember, when you're giving specific error correction, you're giving specific feedback to inform the student to stop undesired behaviors and how to engage in the desired behavior. And you connect that to your school-wide and classroom expectations. Let's break it down. 
The error correction is an informative statement provided by a teacher or another adult following the occurrence of an undesired behavior. When giving error correction, it is important to keep your language, tone of voice, and body language neutral and respectful, and to be brief and specific. You can encourage power struggles and disrespectful behavior when your feedback is vague, sarcastic, or wordy. Your correction should be contingent, occurring immediately after undesired behavior. It should be specific. Tell the learner exactly what they did wrong and what they need to do differently. It should be brief. After redirecting back to appropriate behavior, move on. So how is specific error correction different from redirection or reteaching? Well, you're specifically naming the undesired behavior as well as providing the alternative correct behavior. Remember, when you redirect, you're simply restating the desired behavior as described on the teaching matrix. When you reteach, you are stating the expected behavior and demonstrating it, and then you are having the student demonstrate it immediately and then providing feedback on their performance. In specific error correction, you are respectfully addressing the student and describing their inappropriate behavior. You will then describe the expected behavior and tie the behavior to school-wide expectations. Finally, you will end with encouragement and specific praise as soon as the student carries out what you need them to do. Here are some tips. Deliver correction in a calm, consistent, brief, immediate, and respectful manner. Follow correction immediately with behavior-specific positive statement as soon as the student does what you need them to do. And use error correction as a teaching opportunity. For most children, most of their brain can be given over to learning and social-emotional skills. For children in crisis, much more of their brain is given over to survival and regulation. When you make these response strategies an intentional practice in your classroom, you will build a trauma-informed classroom. You'll empower students and teach resiliency. You'll replace learned responses with appropriate behaviors. You'll help students regulate their emotions. And you will build relationships. Strong teacher-student relationships are key to academic learning. Using a continuum of strategies to respond to inappropriate behaviors will also support you in your practice, particularly Domain 2 of the Danielson Framework. Thank you for watching this video on PBIS Classroom Management Practice 5, a continuum of responses to inappropriate behavior.